All right, it's time to start the erudite speech and time to choose your topic. So when you think about doing a topic for this speech, is this something that you worry your audience might think? In 1930, the Republican-controlled House of Representatives, in an effort to alleviate the effects of the, anyone, anyone, the Great Depression, passed the, anyone, anyone, a tariff bill, are you worried about that? I know a lot of students come to me and say, I don't know anything that anybody wants to hear anything about. And I'm afraid that they're just going to sit there and either judge me or stare at me blankly. I understand that. Uh, there's a, a couple of things you can do to try to combat that. But let's start with finding some categories of information that could possibly help you identify what you are good at or what you do know a little bit about. So here's where we want to start. In Blackboard, there are a couple of documents that you may choose to print out, but if not, if you want to grab a quick sheet of paper or a corner in which you can write on, I would recommend that right now. And I want you to follow along with what I'm doing. So at the top here, we are going to look at a couple of different things. We're going to start with life in general and the categories within life and what maybe consists of our experiences and see if any of those can lead us in a direction towards a topic. So right here you're going to see a document, this is also available in Blackboard, that just has some simple categories. Work, school, food, friends, family, free time, passions, etc. So I want you to go through and sort of look at some of these topics and add some of the material that you think fits your category. Uh, I'll do a couple of them, not many, just because I don't want to waste your time, but once I've finished with that, if you could pause the video and go do that for yourself, that would give you at least a starting point. So for me, I might say under work, uh, I'm a teacher. I might say that uh, I teach public speaking. I might do for work that I work in Belleville and that I am a college professor. So those are some things that I think would fit to this category. For, let's see, I won't do school because that's not as applicable to me. For food, let's say I am vegetarian. Oh, it's all underlined. Oh well, that's alright. I might say that, let's see, I, I'm a fan of cherry pie. Who doesn't like cherry pie, right? I might say that I'm a big fan of anything that is a dip, anything along those lines. Those are some pretty good details about myself. Now let's do one more. I'm going to put under free time that I love fantasy books, oops, fantasy books and movies. My goodness. I will put that I enjoy spending time with my family. Let's see, that I love to read, all of those work, and I love to hang out with my dogs. All of those work, anything I like to do in my free time. Now you may add some stuff under school that says what your degree is, maybe some courses that you're taking. Under friends, what do your friends do for a living? Or what are some of the things that you do with your friends? Some of the places that you go? Is there a restaurant you frequent or an event you guys like to participate in? Same with family. What do your family members do? I might add that one of my family members is really interested in politics and one is interested in religion. One works for a track. One works as an electrician. I might put that my family and I like to take trips. So anything in here that works as a category for you. And then passions, something that you feel really strongly about. For me, I might put parenting, uh, animal abuse, that kind of thing. So whatever fits into the categories, I would highly recommend you do this. Get in there and fill it all out. Pause the video now if you can, do that, and then come back. So let's look here, once you get this back, what we're going to look at with these. Alright, so hopefully you have given a list of things that you think work for each of those categories. Now what? Of those things that you listed, are there any of those that you know a lot about or want to know more about? And there is one other document here to take a look at, and that's this one, selecting a topic. 
of those ones that we mentioned here in this section, are there any that I already know a ton about? If there are, you, want to, you might want to take those and transfer them over. I would say being a teacher, public speaking, um, I mean, I know my own vegetarian lifestyle, but I don't know a ton about that. I am a huge fan of fantasy books and movies, so I could probably put that into this category. Uh, let's see, dogs I know a ton about. Things I'd like to know more about, so things that would go into this section might be something like, oh, excuse me, like um, books, certain books that I'd be more interested in. I wouldn't mind knowing a really good recipe for cherry pie. I would really like to know about what some of the best college teachers do and how I can be better. I can't ever be an expert in that. And honestly, being a teacher, same way. I do know a lot about public speaking. and I do learn more every day, but being a teacher in general, there's always something new to learn. The Belleville area, I really don't know this area that well. So I would love to explore a little bit more. So those are things that I know a little about, but I'd really like to know more. Categorize those into this section. So doing something like dogs, um, oops, looks like fogs, dogs, public speaking, and uh, we'll say, we'll say cherry pie. Oh, no, that one's not a good one. But we'll just go with dogs and public speaking. But if you can come up with, from your list, a variety of things, that would be great, like four or five. And then the things that you want to know more about, I wouldn't mind knowing more about teaching always is good and the Belleville area. And that's the kind of thing you would th throw in here. Put a couple in each category so that you know where to go. And once you get to that point, then you can move forward. So we'll go back. We're going to pause right here. If you can take a second and, and look at your list and transfer some of those over into the categories of what I know a lot about and what I know a little about, but I would love to know more about it. Okay, so hopefully you've taken a moment, you had paused the video and now you're back. Let's move on to the next step. So you've completed both of these, at least on this one you've looked at these top two, and on this one you've filled it out completely. Now let's move to choosing an actual topic. Now what do you do with this? Once you have a topic or a list of topics, you want to ask yourself some questions. Look at those topics. Remember I picked dogs, Let's see if I can remember exactly what it is or go look at it. Dogs, public speaking, teaching, and Belleville. Let's say those are my list of topics. So we're going to go back and I'm going to ask myself some questions. One, am I interested in the topic? Well, yeah, I am interested in the topics. I picked all four of them, so I'm thinking I'm going to keep, keep all of them and, and sort of stick with those. And as we go through these questions, use the questions to eliminate topics that you don't think work for that question. So the next question I'm going to ask myself, will I enjoy researching this topic? So will I enjoy researching information about dogs? Yeah, probably. I really like dogs. <laughs> Big fan. Will I enjoy in researching information about public speaking? Maybe. Will I enjoy researching information about teaching? Absolutely. I still feel like I don't know enough. Uh, let's see, will I enjoy researching information about Belleville? Yeah, it might be a little overwhelming because I'm not 100% sure where to start. <laughs> so maybe I'll take Belleville off the list because with that, I feel a little bit overwhelmed and I'm not 100% sure what I want to do with that. So I'm going to take Belleville off the list. The rest of these I would enjoy. I've done a lot of research on public speaking, so it wouldn't be as overwhelming for me, but it also wouldn't be as exciting. So I would say probably dogs and teaching are still at the forefront, but public speaking still kind of fits into that category. Next question, will I enjoy talking about this topic and sharing my information with the audience? So for dogs, well, certainly I think I would. I enjoy it and I feel like a lot of people have some affinity for animals. Teaching, maybe. I'm not sure exactly where you all are going with your life and are you going to be teaching or are you not going to be teaching. It would be difficult for me to acclimate that topic as easily for you as I could with other topics. Public speaking, everyone's going to use public speaking. So you're going to have to have it no matter what, so I do think that it would be important, which is why I do it for a living. 
So on my sheet, I might get rid of teaching, not because it's not a good topic, but because it's not something I think would be as applicable to you. And the next question I'm going to ask is, will my audience be interested in my topic? Kind of similar to this question, so I'm going to leave it as is. And then next, am I passionate Oops, excuse me, am I passionate about this topic? And that's going to be my final question. And as you see, I have two questions here, or two topics here, and I really need to pick one. Am I passionate about the topics? Absolutely. But which one of these do I think I could relay and use all kinds of persuasive tools and tactics and techniques with? Which one would be the most persuasive? I'm going to go with dogs. And I really think that that would be a good one. So topic I choose, dogs. And we're going to center that there. So if you've got that sheet, you can put that otherwise or whatever you end up choosing. Otherwise, just pick one topic and write it down on a sheet of paper. Leave yourself a little bit of space. I'm going to go with dogs. You may go with something else. Use these questions right here. Pause the video and use these questions to narrow it down to one topic one choice and it can be real broad dogs is really broad that's not really a quote topic but it'll give us a starting point so once you've done that or once you get a chance pause the video and go through each of these questions and pick one topic so pause it now okay so you have gone through your list of topics and you are ready to go with the next step and that next step is to determine what your general purpose or your general idea is for the speech. And it is very broad. You don't even have to have a real narrow topic yet to be able to come up with this. Typically, you're going to have two categories to choose from. There are more, but typically there are two categories. The first one is to inform. The speakers act as a teacher. So you're seeking to kind of enhance knowledge and understanding rather than to push a point or advocate something. That's the first type. Your general point, your general purpose, the overarching purpose of your speech is to inform only. Another one is to advocate or to persuade. And this is where you do act as an advocate, as a, a persuasive entity for a topic. So this goal is to change the attitudes or actions of your audience. So in this case, you have to take a stand. You have to take a side. And that gives you a general purpose of persuasion. Now, knowing that your erudite speech is both informative and persuasive, how do you choose a general purpose? Because typically it's either to inform or persuade. In our case, you can choose a couple of different options here. You can say to persuade. You can leave it there because the bulk of your speech is going to be persuasive. That's not 100% accurate because you have more of a goal than that. You are there to show knowledge and learning. You are there to guide. You are there to enhance understanding, to, to persuade in a way that is an educational persuasion. So it is a little bit more than that. Personally, I like the term to guide. I'm here to guide you or even to educate because it kind of does both an informative and persuasive aspect. But whatever you choose, choose something that fits the tone of your speech. So it should be either to guide, to educate, to lead, to persuade, something along those lines. And when you get that, you can lay that out right here next to the general purpose. So my point would be, let's say to guide. That would be a pretty good one to lay out here. I'm going to bold that. So now I have a general purpose and I have a general topic of which to begin discussing my speech and thinking about where I'm going to go with this. So I've gone through each of these. Now the next move is to determine the specific purpose. And in order to do that, you have to narrow your topic to a point in which it's an effective speech. Now this, I think, is the biggest issue for many people. So let's talk about this and let's use a blank sheet of paper here. We're going to start with dogs which was the topic I chose, or at least the general category that I chose. In that sheet of paper that you have, put your topic at the top, and then underneath, go ahead and put an arrow, all right? So I'm going to just pretend that there's an arrow there because I'm not going to waste it, waste time here on the computer, but let's just pretend we're taking an arrow to direct us down. 
I need to narrow this. I need to make it so that it makes sense for me and it is manageable in a seven to nine minute speech. So what is an aspect of dogs? Well, we could talk about their health. We could talk about um, some of the restrictions on certain breeds. We could talk about breeds in general. We could talk about food. There's a million things that you could discuss that is dogs. So you need to narrow it a little bit. So I'm gonna take a step down. Let's take a step down to breeds. That's an easy step. Now think about it, is breeds specific enough for you to do a seven to nine minute speech? No, <laughs> there are multiple tens of breeds, a hundreds actually. So you really have to narrow it even further. So what could I do? I could pick a specific breed. Personally, I'm a big fan of a variety of types of breeds, including the mutt, who is just a whatever. However, I know that this is an erudite speech. I know that I need to have a persuasive aspect to it. So knowing that, could I pick a breed that is controversial? Should I pick a breed that is controversial? Yeah, I need to do that. And I actually have a, a been for years and years and years a big fan of the pits. So I'm going to pick the pit bull. All right, I think that's a controversial breed. I know a lot about them. I've owned them in the past. And I think this is a good one for an erudite topic. Is this specific enough for an erudite speech? No, it's not specific enough because I could talk about the health of the pit bull, the history of the pit bull, how pit bulls are raised, what are some of the myths of the pit bull, what are some of the things that have happened to pit bulls over time. I could talk specifically about fighting. There are so many things. I could talk about that have to categorize themselves in the area of pit bulls. So I need to step this down one more step and I'm going to pick something that I think would work for an erudite speech, so both informative and persuasive, and would be effective enough that I could find good sources to back up what I'm saying. So I'm going to look at something controversial some of the stereotypes maybe of pit bulls, the myths that are associated with them, and use that as my topic. So myths, the myths of the pit. Sounds kind of eerie, doesn't it? All right, so the myths of the pit bull is what I'm looking at. What are some of the beliefs people have about pit bulls that either are or are not true? That's a good erudite speech. I can educate you on the breed, the pit bull itself, some of its history, maybe its background, that kind of thing. That could be my informative aspect. I could give you the rundown of what those myths are, how they came to be, and what we need to do to debunk those myths, and then end with a conclusion that kind of brings it all together. So I think this is a good topic. Now maybe you didn't pick dogs, maybe you picked um, sports. Maybe you're into sports. Okay, sports. What sport? Football. Let's say you picked football. What about football? Um, maybe it's a particular team that you like. Maybe it is a change or an aspect of football that is new this year or recently. Maybe it's a controversy. Um, let's just say the Patriots. <laughs> and you all know what I'm talking about. Patriots and the flat football. Sounds like a great fiction book. <laughs> But anyway, this is something you could discuss. I could maybe have picked the Broncos since they're my favorite team and talk about a particular player and some of the controversy surrounding him. Or maybe I could talk about a coach and the future of the team or the owner of the team and its future. I don't like those as much um, because it's not a really good erudite type speech, but it does work. It has some, of, some aspects that would work. Uh, the same could apply to if you picked music. Oops. So if you picked music, that might be a topic. And maybe within music, you are um, a fan or a advocate for music in schools. And what about music in schools? So requirements, oops, requirements or those, uh, those options that are available to students in elementary school, say. That would be a really easy one to research. I had a student last semester, a couple semesters ago, that did a speech on how music can positively affect the brain. And she did her entire speech with studies that proved her point. It was great. I loved it. 
That's something you could do. So use these as a guideline to narrow your topic to the point where you feel comfortable with a seven to nine minute speech and you're not overwhelmed. I would do Myths of the Pitbull, okay? So that gives you your starting place for your topic. Then you can get a very specific purpose. And it's really easy to come up with a specific purpose. You basically just add your general purpose to your topic. So I told you my general purpose was to guide and my topic is the myths of the pit bull. So my specific purpose would be to guide you through the myths of the pit bull. Okay, very easy. To guide, general purpose, you through the myths of the pit bull topic. Okay, that's your specific purpose. And that you can include on that sheet as well. It's got a spot for you right there to put your specific purpose. To guide you through the myths of the pit bull. Okay, that would be my specific purpose. And this is a spot for you to narrow down. I just did it on a separate document. And then you can come back to this later to include your thesis statement if you wish. So that's how you get to your specific purpose. I did, I, it sounds like I'm cheating, but I didn't, I swear. I did do this in advance. <laughs> so it's here if you want to see how I got to that point. So you can kind of see dog breeds, the pit bull, and how I got to the myths of the pit bull. And this is just giving you some overview of what I, what I did to get to this point. Okay? Now, let's say with all of that, with all these things, you are still at a loss. If you're still at a loss, there is a full list linked in Blackboard of potentially good topics for an erudite speech. Here is my reservation. Please do not go Google good persuasive speeches. Don't do it. I've done it and you get middle school speeches. I don't want those. They're not erudite, they're middle school persuasive speeches. I want you to find college level erudite speeches. So what I've provided for you on Blackboard, which is much more than what you see here, this is just a starting point, is college level speeches. So let's look at those. If you are totally lost, use that as a transition, okay? Hopefully those helped. If you have questions, let me know, and you know I'm always here to help.